All right, uh, Shalom all. Before I start, we give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Karkarash, the waters of the elders, the apostles, Rav Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim, Mark Wathi, learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. This is going to be another one through the Spirit. And for this one, let me go to uh, second, uh, no, first Kings. Because basically, you know, just reading through, uh, you know, reading through Kings right now, uh, I was at the point, you know, because I, you know, read through it before, but I can remember, you know, not too far, you don't get too far in, and you had uh, King Solomon, and we know that uh, in the reincarnation that Yahushua was King Solomon, but basically, King Solomon, he had did a whole lot of a good, you know, he put together many of the books that we still read today, you know, he was a holy and a righteous man, there was uh, peace in his time. But he did, he had his one little, uh, I'll say mishap, and it and it, it, it kind of tarnished the rest of his reputation, all right, which is basically uh, this video, hey, it's, that, it, all it takes is one slip up, and all of your righteousness, everything that you were known for, uh, could completely go out the window, and I have, uh, I'm going to be getting the main scripture out of, out of Ezekiel, all right, so basically, hey, it's better to, there's one scripture, ooh, okay, let me start off with this, better is he, ooh, let me get this, kind of right here, Sirach 19 and 24, he that hath small understanding, so a person who may not be all that deep, and fear of the most high power, but that person is God-fearing, Yahweh-fearing, is better than one that hath much wisdom, and transgresseth the law, of the Most High, Khan, hey, straight to it, you better off just being a, you know, hey, you might not be the super breakdown dude, but if your fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is on point, that's what it's all about, because you can be, you know, you could be known for, you could have been in this truth 20 some years, you're the Hebrew dude, you know, you remember, at, from, you can quote the scripture on the drop of a dime, but then you do one fatal mistake and you'll never be seen again, all right? And, you know, it was just, it was, it was, it was jacking me up, you know, just reading this first Kings, because you read through the chapters, it's like, dang, Solomon, you know, at the, in that incarnation, King Solomon, he was doing it all right. You know, he fulfilled his final wishes of King David. You know, he was having the temple be built up. He had a beautiful home for himself built up. And then all of it went to waste because of one mistake, which was idolatry. All right. So let me read this first. This is first Kings nine and five. It says, Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name, uh, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And you sure should know that this happened to us. That's why we're in this situation, all right? Because we ended up losing it all. We, as a whole nation, tarnished our whole, reputa uh, whole reputation over uh, BS, all right? So basically, hey, in this time that we're going through now, everything that you went through for your Halabash and Yahushai, the blood, sweat, and tears that you shed with the brotherhood, don't let all those things go to waste over one little mishap, all right? Don't be too slothful in this season that we have now and fall off. And when everything is said and done in these prophecies, hey, don't let it all fall away just because of the mark of the beast, because your stomach was growling, or because your your child's stomach was growling, all right? Remember, oh, there's the one scripture, uh, never do a miss. Remember the end, yeah, let me get this. Uh, remember the end, and thou shalt never do a miss, if I remember correctly, out of uh, Sirach. Always keep your mind on the end goal, you know, and everything that and everything that you do. All right, don't let one little slip up erase all of your righteousness and all of your years of hard work. Yep, Sirach, uh, Sirach 7 and 36. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do a miss. Khan, hey, so remember the end of this whole thing, of this whole world that we're living in, all right, don't let one little, oh man, let me, don't let that be what gets you, all right, because obedience 
is uh, better than sacrifice, all right? Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, which is, hey, that was in the scriptures. Matter of fact, let me get this. The Lord, rather you obey, just obey, all right? And whether, and whether it be through directly listening to the brethren that are over you, all right, or dealing in the spirit, all right? There ain't nothing like, there ain't, <laughs> there ain't nothing like doing it right. There ain't nothing like doing what you're told, all right? First Samuel 15 and 22, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of ram. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai prefer us just to be, hey, just, just be on the straight and narrow. You don't got to be a super deep, flashy dude. You don't have to know every precept. You don't have to be the Hebrew dude. You know, you don't have to, uh, you know, oh, no, nah, brother, I got it. You know, no, nah, brother, I got I, I got you, brother. No, nah, I got you. Hey, you don't have to be the dude picking up everyone's tab. Just stay on point with it. All right? And don't let go of the will. Because the moment you let go of that will is the moment you're going off road. All right? And this is what uh, Samuel was telling uh, Saul. Because basically he didn't listen to him dealing with uh, slaying uh, Agag the Amalekite. All right? And there was another instance in which uh, Saul was being hasty when he had killed that, uh, he had slain one of the animals for the sacrifice before Samuel had gotten there. All right, verse 23 now. It says, For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So, hey, not listening to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, whether it be by the Lord putting the Spirit on one of the men over you, or just dealing in the spirit. That's witchcraft. That's idolatry. That's iniquity. And you never know when that one could be it. The one scripture, it says, he that, uh, I, might, I might have to get to it. Basically, if you commit one sin, you commit them all. All right. It says, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So if you reject Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, he's going to reject your salvation. Your salvation papers are going to get revoked. All right. Scratched up and tossed uh, off in the shredder. All right, and you don't want that. All right, so now let me get Ezekiel. Hey, don't let hey don't all the work you put into this. Don't let it go to waste over nothing. All right, over a, over a bitch. All right, over a car, over money, over your own pride. Don't let your own pride throw. Man, fuck that, man. I've been in this for two. Man, I want to be promoted. I'm. I know I'm over that, brother. I want to be. Hey, that's not the spirit to be in. All right, Ezekiel eighteen. In verse 24, it says, But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned, and his trespass that he hath trespassed, and, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Con, hey, so, hey, there's a one scripture, basically it tells you, you know, charity, uh, it covers a multitude of sins, but there ain't enough charity to always cover your ass, all right? You never know when that one could just be it. And with King Solomon, you know, what happened with him and his son, that is a, you know, a great example. King Solomon in that incarnation, he was a great, wise, powerful man, but he had that one slip up and dealing with idolatry. And look what happened to the nation of Israel. And it, it ended up splitting through uh, his son, uh, which was, uh, I believe, uh, Rehoboam and through uh, Jeroboam, all right? All, in all of his righteousness, it wasn't able to save him in the day of his iniquity, all right? Kind of another one, Ezekiel 33, that's what it is, yeah. Damn, Ezekiel 33. Damn, it basically says the same thing, Ezekiel 33 and 12 now. It says, therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. So if you turn from your BS, from your wickedness, then you can be delivered. No matter how wicked of a person you are, which is why the elect and the one-third are going to receive salvation. Because ultimately down here we're all deserving of, deserving of death, but we chose to turn around. But it says, hey, it says in the day, a righteous man, the day he commits that iniquity, hey, it's rap city. The Lord may not forgive him. Verse 13, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But, but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Con, so don't let everything that you've done go to waste. Because the second you take shit for, the th second you take everything for granted, that could be it. 
All right, you never know. All right, there's plenty of examples. Hey, when you're not listening to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, when you're not flowing in the spirit, that could be it. All right, there's an example in, uh, I want to say in one of the books of Kings, you have the king, Josiah. Hey, it said he had the greatest Passover. It said there was never a Passover thrown like that in Israel. And the moment he was disobedient to the Lord and he tried to go up, uh, go up to war with that Egyptian king, the Lord took his life. The Lord ended him. All right, and there's so there's so many more. There's a whole heap of uh, whole heap of examples. All right, when you hey from through Genesis or Revelation, you'll have a righteous man. A hey, was Salakia so like was on point. Oh oh shoot! Another uh, example. Uh, Eli, he was the priest uh, before Samuel, you know, but he wasn't checking his sons. And the Lord told him, he said, Eli, your, your lineage will never reign in the priesthood, which even came all the way down to his son Abiathar, which the Lord put the spirit on Abiathar to side with, uh, what is it, Adoniah against King Solomon. And King Solomon came around and, was, and got his revenge for it, basically. Hey, so the, hey, that shit carries. And the day that you commit that BS, and the day that you become disobedient to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, that could be it. And I'll uh, end on this uh, last scripture because you never know all right so don't let all the hard work that you've done so far don't let all this go to waste especially now in this fucking in this weird time period that we're in you know there's a lot of little free time there's a lot of time to be out here bullshitting don't waste all of it all right uh Sirach 5 I'm gonna start at verse 5 it says concerning matter of fact I'm gonna start at 4 Sirach 5 and 4 Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. So don't think, you know, you're always going to slide out unpunished. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. And say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Come on. Hey, so don't think the Lord is always going to let you slip. Ah, uh, man, you know, man, I've been in this... Man, man, I deserve this. Oh, I deserve that. Man, I've been doing this. Man, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm at such and such rank in the camp. The Lord not kicking me. Hey, no. All right? Because the moment you get to thinking like that is the moment you'll be done. All right? Verse 7. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Come on. Hey, so don't let it all go to waste. All right, because the moment you think it's safe is the moment that it'll be over because you slipped up on some on some BS. You know, you thought all that you uh, that one scripture, the dude says, so, uh, you know, he had all the riches in his life, not knowing he was going to die that night. All right. So, hey, I hope this was an edifying lesson. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Wakar Kodash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the elect Akim. Walk, uh, walk, walk, and learn teaching the truth and sincerity. I'm going to say Shalom.